do I mean? Well, weight loss occurs with fasting when your insulin levels are low and you burn through your glycogen stores. This enables you to access your fat stores effectively. And we can call this change from burning carbs to burning fats, flipping the metabolic switch. Therefore, you'll need to fast for longer in order to burn through those glycogen stores and flip that metabolic switch. So in summary, if you're on a high carbohydrate diet, you're gonna have to fast for longer to get the same effects of somebody who is on a low carb diet. Which leads me neatly onto my carb dodging top tip. If you get your diet right first, fasting becomes far easier. And Matthew, who left this comment on one of my previous videos, discovered this as well, as did the 350 people who liked his comment. When you start a ketogenic diet, one of the things you'll notice in a short space of time is that the hunger you previously had before simply isn't there. And that's because ketones themselves actually inhibit hunger, and you're allowing your body to access your own fat stores. Then if you follow the rule, only eat when you're hungry, you may find yourself falling into a pattern of regular fasting simply because you're not hungry. I often say that the ketogenic diet and intermittent fasting are like yin and yang. They perfectly complement each other. The ketogenic diet creates the perfect environment for weight loss by changing what we eat. And intermittent fasting creates the perfect environment for weight loss by changing when we eat. So like all things, we need to balance our time of fasting and our time of feasting. A balance for cellular repair and cellular growth, for fat storage and fat burning. Get your diet right to start with by eating nourishing real food. Remember that a low carb ketogenic diet can really help with this. Start slowly and gradually adjust to periods of longer fasting. Be patient, give yourself time, and the results will come.